Did you know that LA City landlords will owe most LA City tenants relocation assistance when terminating a tenancy? In this guide for LA City renters and LA City landlords, we are going to cover the Just Cause for Eviction Ordinance that covers most properties in LA City. We're going to run through when relocation assistance is owed, how much relocation assistance is owed, and the very few exceptions that there are. Hey there, Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire associates we have been helping renters and landlords understand regulations during these crazy days a couple of important things to remember number one is we can't give tax or legal advice but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice subscribe to this channel and another important thing to remember is what we're covering now is considered permanent renter protections depending on when you're watching this video the los angeles city and los angeles county eviction moratorium may be a distant past or recent past those were emergency renter protections we are now discussing permanent renter protections so if you're ready to dive into the just cause for eviction ordinance for la city hit that like button and let's get started. Let's run through to see exactly which properties the Just Cause for Eviction Ordinance applies to. And here we have the number of properties broken down in the city. First, the biggest group are the properties that fall under the Rent Stabilization Ordinance, or RSO. According to the LA City Council, there's approximately 640,000 of those properties in the RSO, and they have their own special regulations. These are rental properties that were first built on or before October 1st, 1978, and it does not include houses, but it includes apartments, condos, multifamily. Those fall under the RSO. Those properties have their own just cause eviction protections. They do not fall under this ordinance. So that's very important to understand that if a property is under the RSO, you will go to the RSO regulations for that property. Now the rest of the properties, some fell under the Tenant Protection Act and there's about 138,000 units that fell under this statewide law that added in some just cause protections as well as some rent caps. So this is duplexes and bigger properties that are 15 years and older, but obviously built before October 1st, 1978, because otherwise they'd fall under the RSO. So that's about 138,000 units that will fall under the new Just Cause for Eviction ordinance. And then the properties where there's no protection. So according to the city council, there's hundreds of thousands of units. We saw different numbers, but in the ordinance itself, it says there's hundreds of thousands of units that had no protections. Now, what would not have a protection? What didn't fall under the RSO? Well, it would be properties built after October 1st, 1978. And then there are certain properties exempt from the state statewide Tenant Protection Act, AB 1482, and that specifically was mom and pop uh, property. So houses, condos, owner-occupied duplexes, those were exempt from AB 1482. And then any construction 15 years old or newer, which is a rotating number, those were exempt from AB 1482, no matter how big they were. These properties will also fall under the LA City Just Cause for Eviction Ordinance. So it'll be the top two on this pyramid, RSO under their own regulations, and every other rental property just about in LA City will fall under this new ordinance. Now here we're actually going to dive into the ordinance, and I know this is not exciting, but rather than reading an article in the newspaper or online, this is actually where the rubber meets the road, as you hear me say. This is really the language. So it's going to be important as a tenant or a landlord that you understand actually what is in the ordinance. And then you're, of course, going to rely on an attorney to help you interpret it. But you're not going to know the questions they ask if you don't understand the ordinance. So we encourage you to sit through this. I know it's like watching paint dry. So here's the very beginning of the ordinance. This was signed into law by Karen Bass on January 25th, 2023. And it's in place right now at an urgency clause to make sure it was put in and it's rocking and rolling. So let's dive into what it says. It starts out talking about the Tenant Protection Act and the RSO, and then it gets into the ordinance itself. So 
the just cause for eviction ordinance. And that's specifically what this one covers. There are additional permanent renter protections coming in LA City, and we're gonna cover that in additional content. This is specifically the just cause for eviction ordinance. I have a link below so you can read through this. I encourage you to take a look, but there's an important definition here that will come up later on when we talk about the relocation assistance, and that is a qualified tenant. So this specifically is what is meant by a qualified tenant. If someone is age 62 or older, if they have a disability, or if it's a person who has minors residing in the home with them. So remember qualified tenant, of course, you can always go back and reread that section. This next section lays out just cause evictions and what it doesn't specify, but what it is laying out is at fault versus no fault evictions. And whose fault do we mean? Well, we mean the tenant's fault. So the first ones we're gonna run through are examples where it's the tenant's fault for the reason they're being evicted. So primary example, the most common one is the tenant has not paid their rent. Now there will be changes in LA City and we'll follow up on a video later on that, but that is a primary at fault reason. We'll then get into the no fault just cause evictions and that's where the relocation assistance will be owed. Let me repeat that. For at fault, when the tenant is at fault, the landlord does not owe relocation assistance. So if the tenant wasn't paying rent, the landlord can move into an unlawful detainer while following the legal process and they do not owe the tenant relocation assistance. It's when we get to the no fault section and I'll make that clear. So these are the obvious things. I encourage you to read through this. It would be things such as creating a nuisance as a tenant. If you're using the apartment for an unlawful purpose, if a tenant doesn't sign a written lease, it's substantially similar to the previous lease, they can be evicted. If a tenant doesn't cooperate with letting a landlord in for repairs or to show to prospective purchasers, a tenant can be evicted for that. So those are some of the examples of at fault reasons that a landlord can evict. Moving into no fault, and again, the tenant hasn't done anything wrong, the landlord's gonna terminate their tenancy for one of these specified reasons for rental properties in LA city and the landlord is going to owe relocation assistance, which we're going to cover how much very shortly. H, section H for no fault is important. And remember H because we're going to be referencing that in a little bit here when we run through how a landlord is going to give the notice and what is required. So H is known as owner move-in. So the landlord, a spouse, domestic partner, grandchildren, children, parents, or grandparents. So it's important to understand this is a straight line. This doesn't include nieces and nephews, brothers and sisters. That is not considered owner move-in. The other thing that falls under H would be a resident manager. So it is required for buildings with 16 or more units if there's an on-site manager and there's special regulations related to that for the no-fault termination of tenancy in order to put a manager in. The next big one is I, and I is when a landlord is going to terminate a tenancy to demolish the residential real property. So that's to completely get rid of it. Two, to do a substantial remodel. And there's some specific language we're gonna cover briefly in here. And three would be to withdraw the property permanently from rental housing use, otherwise known as the Ellis Act. Let's dive into the substantially remodel because this will be one of the most common, in fact, was one of the most common ways for a landlord to terminate a tenancy. They were gonna substantially remodel the property and then be able to charge market rent. Here's what's specified. The landlord has to reach out and secure the necessary permits. So this must be work that must be permitted and they're going to serve the notice with a copy of the permits so that the tenant knows that the work is going to happen. And it must be work that the tenant has to be out for a minimum of 30 days and it has to fall under California Civil Code 1946.2, which is AB 1482. That's what put that into place. And it means things that require permits. It means things such as uh, abatement of lead paint, asbestos, major remodels. And again, secure those permits. Those need to be delivered when delivering this particular notice to terminate tenancy. J is another big one. That is a landlord is being forced by a court or by a governmental agency to make the unit empty. So that's where this no fault termination falls under. And don't forget that we're real estate agents based in Southern California. If you are looking to buy or sell, nobody knows LA City Ordinance like our team. You can reach out to us with the link below. So which 
properties do not fall under this ordinance. This is an important section. And the first thing it stipulates is that a property that becomes subject to this ordinance if the tenant's lease expires or they've lived in the property continuously and lawfully for at least six months, whichever happens first, then the property is subject to this ordinance. Now, an important question for your attorney, whether you're a landlord or tenant, is whether that six month time period has already been met before this legislation went into effect or if that clock starts ticking once this has gone into effect, which is January 25th, 2023. Talk to your attorney about that to see whether you fall under this right now, depending on when you're watching this video. So we'll continue to run through quickly the list here. So the very first category, as I mentioned, are properties that are subject to the Rental Stabilization Ordinance, the RSO Ordinance. Those properties do not fall under this ordinance. They fall under the RSO Ordinance, which is different. If it's a hotel, if it is a religious facility, uh, licensed care facility for the elderly if it's student housing does not fall under and here's an important one housing accommodations in which the tenant shares bathroom or kitchen facilities with the owner who maintains their personal residence at the residential real property so what this means is if you are a landlord in la city who is living in a property renting out bedrooms or renting out rooms in the property as long as it's your primary residence and you share a bathroom or kitchen with your tenants you are not subject to this ordinance. That's an important exception for landlords in LA City. Then it runs through a bunch of other exceptions that probably won't apply to you if you're watching this video. If you're a limited equity housing cooperative, if it's a motel housing project, if it's a nonprofit facility for short-term treatment assistance for drug or substance abuse, living environment for homeless people, these aren't gonna apply. So your exceptions are very limited. Hang in there, I promise we're making progress. This legislation also introduces new notices that a landlord will be required to give a tenant in writing when they sign or renew a lease. And it's also supposed to be posted in an accessible common area of the property. So hopefully LA City will draft the appropriate language for landlords so they can meet this section of the ordinance. Okay, more changes in LA City. So if a landlord is going to move forward with an at-fault termination of tenancy, anything other than non-payment of rent, so an example would be nuisance or illegal activity, they're going to have to follow these rules. That's why it's important that you have an attorney on your side, landlords, because if it's, for an example, an unlawful activity, the termination notice must set forth specific facts to permit a determination of the date, place, witnesses, and circumstances concerning the eviction reason. So that's very different. It's not a three-day notice to quit anymore. It's a notice that has to have facts on it. Okay, so that was at fault. Now moving on to no faults. Remember I said, remember Section H? Well, here it is. You have to remember Section 8. If you're terminating for owner move-in, for example, you're going to have to file with the department a declaration. It's going to need to identify the person who's moving in. It's going to need the date which they'll move in. It's going to need the rent that's presently charged and the date of the last rental increase. And it's going to cost $75, uh, which can be adjusted and can continue to go up. That's a fee to pay for the cost of administering and enforcing the provisions. So that is the fee you pay as a landlord in order to be able to serve this notice. And then for sections I, K, and N, I was you're going to do a significant remodel. You have to follow this here. The landlord shall file with the department a declaration on a form and in the number prescribed by the department stating the reason for eviction. So that's where you're probably going to have to share your permits and all that information. And it mentions here Code of Civil Procedure, Section 1162. And that law basically states that you have to do it in person, hand it to another adult in the property, or you can post and mail it. But you can't email this stuff. You can't text this stuff for it to be a lawful notice to the tenants. And J, if it's a governmental order, well, you're going to have to share that governmental order with the department. And it's going to have to include the declaration from the judge or the agency that's making you get that unit vacant. Okay, I promise we're getting 
getting close to the end. The actual relocation assistance. What is the number? Now, here's what's important to remember. Under the Tenant Protection Act, under AB 1482, for properties that were exempt, those hundreds of thousands of properties, they didn't have to give a valid reason for the termination of tenancy. They basically could just do it. And they didn't owe relocation assistance, particularly relocation assistance in these numbers. So this is specifically for no fault. We'll run through this quickly. If a tenant has been in the property for fewer than three years, it's going to be 9,200 to all other tenants or 19,400 to qualified tenants. Remember I said to remember what qualified tenants are? This is the reason because it changes the amount of relocation assistance. If they've been in the property for three years or longer, the amount goes up, whether it's a regular tenant or a qualified tenant. If the tenant is at area median income of 80% or less, then they're going to get these relocation amounts, 12,050 or 22,950 of qualified tenants. And there's a special section that you won't owe these if you're eligible under the Los Angeles Municipal Code section 151.30E. You get a discount, but it's not a major discount. I'll include a link so you can check that out. Run that by your attorney landlords and run that by your attorney tenant. It doesn't look like it's gonna save much. Section six is an important exception. And what it says is that if it's a single family house, and the owner is a person who owns no more than four dwelling units and a single family home on a separate lot in the city of LA, then the relocation assistance is not the higher amounts you see above. It's actually one month's rent that was in effect when the landlord served the notice. That's one important exception for certain landlords that meet these criteria, they will only have to pay one month's rent as relocation assistance. And a few more pieces of the puzzle, the relocation assistance would go to the one main tenant, if there's one tenant, or it'll be split amongst the other tenants in an equal share for the relocation assistance. And another important thing is landlords, in addition to the relocation assistance and following all these steps and turning your paper in and you have a certain number of days to let the department know, you're also going to be paying for the city's relocation assistance provider. So it'll be $840 for each unit occupied by a qualified tenant, $522 for each occupied by other tenants, an additional $72 to cover the administrative costs. And of course, that number can go up. Let us know your LA City Just Cause for Eviction Ordinance questions. I'm sure you have them. We'll do our best to get you the answer or point you in the right direction. Make sure you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletters. So updates like these will be coming straight to your inbox every Sunday. And you're not gonna wanna miss this video where we cover more for LA landlords and renters. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, and we want to hear from you.